So today I'm talking about a P0200 code, what it is and how you can go about fixing it. And so what is a P0200 code? Well, it's an injector circuit open. And so what does this mean? Well, basically each cylinder on the engine is going to have a fuel injector that's being controlled by the computer to inject fuel into that cylinder. But when you get this P0200 code, the computer is seeing some kind of problem inside of the injector circuit, which basically is the wires the computer is using to control the injectors. And so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why. When you get this P0200 code, you more than likely are going to get other codes that point to specific cylinders. So for example, if you also got like a P0201, that's going to point to cylinder number one, P0202, cylinder number two, and so on and so on. Well, and so for example, if you're also getting like a P0201, injector circuit open cylinder one, then in that case, it's going to be a good idea to go focus on that cylinder one fuel injector, because in that case, that's more than likely the problem. If you're getting multiple fuel injector circuit codes, then there might be another issue going on. But if you are just getting one other fuel injector code, then again, it's a good idea just to go focus on that one injector and the wires going to it. And so what would be some possible causes of a P0200 code? Well, the main things that's going to cause this is either you got a bad fuel injector or there's some kind of issue going on in the wiring going to it. And so there's going to be some different ways to go about troubleshooting this. If you are getting other fuel injector codes on just like one cylinder or maybe two, the first thing I would do is I go test the fuel injector on those cylinders. If you have a multimeter, you can go and check those fuel injectors using ohms. And basically how you go about testing the circuitry part of the fuel injector, there can be other problems with the fuel injector, but the fuel injector circuit part is a coil that's built into them. So you can use ohms on a multimeter to go and test that coil that's inside of there. And basically to do this, you look up what the rated ohms are for that fuel injector, since there can be differences, and then you check to see if it falls inside of that range. And if it doesn't fall inside that range, then that coil that's built into there, it's gone bad. If you can't find what the rated ohms are for that fuel injector, you can go and test the known good one, and then check to see if the suspected bad one matches that. So for example, say you're getting a P0201, so you go to test that fuel injector on cylinder number one, but you're not getting no codes for cylinder number four then you can't test that fuel injector on cylinder number four and then see if cylinder number one fuel injector matches. But basically, if you're getting one other fuel injector circuit code or maybe two, the first thing I would do is I go test the fuel injectors on those cylinders and be sure they're good. And the next thing that could cause this is some kind of wiring issue. If there's any kind of open, short, a blown fuse, anything like that, then that can cause problems. If you are getting a lot of injector circuit codes, especially if all the cylinders are showing fuel injector circuit codes, then for sure it's a good idea to go check for any fuel injector fuses that might have gone bad, because if there's a blown fuse, then that's going to cause problems. And if there is a blown fuse, then more likely you'll be getting a lot of other fuel injector circuit codes. If you do go to work on your vehicle, it's a good idea to get wiring schematics and diagrams. That way you know for sure what's going on with the fuel injector circuit on your particular vehicle. But usually what's going on with these fuel injector circuits is that when the key goes into the on position, one wire is going to always be hot. It's always going to have 12 volts going to it. And then the other wire is going to be ground. And the ground side is going to be controlled by the computer. And that's how the computer controls the fuel injector is by controlling the on and off with the ground wire. And so if you have a test light or you have a multimeter, the first thing to do is go put the key in the on position and be sure you're getting 12 volts to the circuit on one of the wires. Because when the key's in the on position, one of the wires should always be hot. You can also test the ground side and be sure there's a good ground. One way to go about testing that ground wire and be sure the computer sent it a signal is that if you have a 12 volt test light, you can't go from the positive side of the battery to the ground wire on that fuel injector circuit. Start up the vehicle and that little light inside there should start to pulse. You'll see it pulsing just slightly. And if it is pulsing, that usually means that it's working. Sometimes it could be kind of hard to see that pulse inside of there with these 12 volt test lights. Oh, and so for that reason, a lot of people, they'll use what's called a Noid light. These are real low cost devices, usually like around $5 or so. And basically, you just plug them into that fuel injector circuit, start up the vehicle, and if you can see a pulse inside of there, then you know it's working. And if you don't see a pulse inside of there, you know it's not working. If you need to see what I'm talking about with these noise lights, I'll put a link down below in the description box. And these noise lights are much better to use than a 12-volt test light because it's easier to see that pulse inside of there. I made a full video on this, how you go about testing the fuel injector, the fuel injector circuit, and everything to do with that. If you need to check that out, I'll put a link down below in the description box. But basically, if the fuel injectors are good, then the next thing to go and do is to check the wiring. Be sure there's no open, short, any blowing fuse, anything like that. Because the next thing that could cause this is some kind of wiring issue. And so that's basically it. 
I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0200 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.